So this talk is about native proteins and SE cells. Who knows what proteins are? Um, who has ever wanted proteins? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, we have a proof of concept. Good. Cool. Yeah. So I'll just give you the story. I'm not going to do the technical explanation. Sarkin is going to do that. So the story here is that about two years ago, Carter came up to me and said he wants Lewis style proteins in this. So why can't we be like Erlang or go and have one million autonomous uh, lightweight processes, for example? So there are people have tried this, right? If you look online, there are like millions of libraries. I mean, not millions, but there are like lots of libraries on the internet about how to actually add this. Um, so one naive approach is okay. We're going to abstract over native threads that are available, um, but it's too much overhead, and you can't really make that many. You run out eventually. The, um, the operating system doesn't like people making native threads like their proteins. Um, and the DB actually gave a lightning talk about this, um, where he tried to emulate yield the sort of protein thing with the condition system. And this also has too much overhead because it's very expensive to have a uh, condition system around. And it's also semantically limited so you couldn't express some things. So my response to Kartik was, well, then go do it. So um, go design an interface for proteins, how they should look like for this, and implement the naval and SPCL. But actually, nothing happened until now because on Friday, we were both at SPCL 25, and I actually saw Kartik. For the first time in a very long time. So I said, hey, Carter, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, so he was busy getting his wind debug lightning talk there already. But I looked into it and I realized that CMU still actually has lightweight user space green threads on x86, which was later replaced and thrown out by native threads. So a lot of the older Lisbon implementations or their older states had, um, they didn't have native threads, they had like this lightweight multi process and stuff. But you think about it, proteins are just green threads. Minus granted red schedule. So it's hard to add stuff, but it's pretty easy to remove stuff. So I thought, well, let's just do it. Um, and then, so yesterday, after the DLS doing, we went to this pub and we decided, okay, let's go, let's go make this work. <laughs> uh, let's really make the mind of this. So, next. Um, so, yeah, this, we, we had some, we had some uh, alcoholic beverages, it was very good. And then, you can go next. And then actually, we stopped, we crashed, we, we got somewhere along. But then at five in the morning today, <laughs> project text me, it works. So that's very good. <laughs> and so now, um, so yeah, there was just some pair programming. Basically, what we did was we took the CMD sale commission, and we looked at it. Uh, this was just for x86. Project is running on an M1 Mac, I believe. That's right, so M1 we Pro. To, it to work on ARM, so we went. Ported it, um, made it work with native threads because CMU still so doesn't have native threads. Um, so I kind of helped him debug and stuff because I don't think he has what you haven't written Fox before, right? Not really, no. Yeah, but anyway. Until now. Um, and then we did some debugging and actually it works. So now Pratik will tell you about it. Okay, um, so before I show the demo, I'm just going to talk real quick about the API um, that we've implemented. Um, so there's three functions. Um, if you've ever written Lua, this is basically just a ripoff of Lua's coroutine API. Um, so the first one is how you make coroutines, which is make coroutine. Um, we are implementing stackful coroutines, if you know the difference between stackful and stackless. So actually make, make coroutine allocates a new stack um, for this new coroutine. Um, second one is coroutine resume. This is how you actually run coroutines. Um, this performs like a context switch, so completely in user space, it just swaps out the stacks uh, for the currently running Lisp thread. Um, it does some special setup um, if you're resuming a coroutine for the first time. Uh, and then there's coroutine yield, which is basically kind of like a symmetric or almost asymmetric operation for resume. Uh, it lets you uh, pass a value back to the coroutine that resumed you, and so it's a way of switching again. So these are the three functions that we're going to see in the demo. So now it's time for the demo. And just a quick disclaimer before we do the demo, this is highly unstable. Um, the examples we're going to see are fairly simple, but still, I think, uh, sufficient to see what's uh, kind of cool about this, uh, this feature. Thank you. Uh, uh, how do I? Oh, I have to like narrow it, I think. There you go. Oh, is there? We're starting to go. Is it? Oh, oh, cool. Uh, Okay, so I'm gonna have to like do it from here, I guess. See? Okay. 
Okay, uh, actually, can I, yeah, I've got like five minutes. This isn't going to take super long. Well, this, this is a minute by default. Yes, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Okay, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll try and do it from here. It's going to be weird since I can't see it on the screen. Okay, so this is the first example. Um, we have this little package called SP coroutine, um, which has these three API functions and then the internal implementation. Um, we're going to have two coroutines. One is a producer, one is a consumer. The first thing we do is we convert the current list thread to like a, a dummy coroutine just so we can schedule coroutines. Uh, and then... So the producer coroutine, you can see um, we use make coroutine. We pass it the initial function, which is just an anonymous function here. And it's going to loop from 0 just to infinity. And what it's going to do, it's going to yield to the consumer with just i times i. So it's producing squares. And then the consumer coroutine um, is just going to loop. And it's going to basically resume uh, the producer to get the squares and then print them out. And we just go to sleep so we can uh, not spam the terminal. And then to actually kick this off, uh, we coroutine resume uh, the consumer coroutine. So that'll start running that, which is then going to resume that one, which then yields to that. And it's just back and forth like ping pong. So uh, I got my tmux here. Uh, so I'm just going to run a SPCL with this script. I'm going to load the coroutines thing. And boom, so 0, 1, 4. Nine. Okay, so those are squares. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's running. Um, yeah. So. But wait, but wait. There is more. Uh, so there's a second uh, example, which is a little more complicated. Um, so, has anyone ever written a function to generate all the permutations of like a list or something? Yeah, I, there's some recursive algorithm, which I, I, I copied this from the Lua, the Lua manual, so I don't actually know what's going on. But um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, again, we have a producer and consumer. Um, I have this just, I just have like a, a, an array of like zero to six or something. Um, and I have this handle perm function, uh, which is actually just a wrapper for coroutine yield. And then I have this function called perm gen, which is basically taking an array and then the size of the array or it's like a recursive parameter. Uh, and it uses this recursion um, to generate, uh, or basically hand, it calls handle perm on all the permutations uh, of the array. Um, so again, we convert thread to coroutine. We have a producer which calls perm gen uh, on the like the static array up there. And it's yielding, um, actually, I guess uh, I'll go back to that. The consumer is just going to uh, resume the producer. Basically, I, the idea here is the producer is producing permutations, the, cons the consumer is uh, getting those and then stashing them into. Oh, this is a. Uh, no, this is fine. Um, it's just getting them and printing them out. Um, and what's interesting here is that the producer, the yield, is actually very deep within the call stack here, right? We have the top level perm gen, which goes into perm gen, which then recurses and recurses, and then only. When it hits the base case, does it actually do this yield? But since we're using stackful coroutines, we can uh, yield um, deep within the stack. We just save the stack, swap it out, uh, and then we can save the context and go back to it. So let's run this example. Um, I think, yeah, I have two perm gen. Okay, so this might have been the wrong example, but it's doing the same thing. Um, so basically, if there's six elements, we get six factorial permutations. That's 720. So we see all of these. They got collected into a list. And that was done um, really by just like taking this straightforward imperative function and taking the sort of deep base case and just turning it into a yield. So you get this nice iterator of this um, sort of imperative program. That's the sort of thing that coroutines are nice for. Um, you can turn straight line imperative code into like an iterator, which is cool. Um, so those are the demos. Um, How much time uh, Like one minute? Yeah. 20 seconds. 20 seconds? That's it. All right, yeah, well, I mean. Thank you, Slot. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, if I can. Uh, what now? Whatever. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Katarina, and I thank Mark also for the photos and the hazelnut shots. Okay. Thank you.
Yes, in fact, this is, uh, I think, yield and resume. Lua, for instance, does asymmetric coroutines. This is uh, the CMUCL like stack groups implementation, which is basically a port of, uses symmetric coroutines, but we sort of did like a basic asymmetric. Yes, you'll, you'll be able to yield to one specific Yes, okay. yes. From top of yours. Cool. Thank um, you. Yep. Yeah, well, what's next? Uh, Very cool. I'll leave you up. <laughs> <laughs> the only dot I guess.